What's up gearheads? Tubby with GearReport.com. Today we're going to be reviewing the DSP Armory Titan AR-10 in 308. Stick around. All right, before we jump into the review of the DSP Armory Titan, let's go over a couple of the administrative items about the rifle and look at some of the features and specifications of it. So DSP directly on their website for the Titan lists the lower receiver as an AR-10 Generation 3, a billet lower with made of 70-75 T6 aluminum with an enhanced flared magwell, hard-coated and Type 3 anodized. The upper receiver is a 7076 T6 aluminum with an M4 feed ramps that are again hard coat Type 3 anodized. The barrel itself is a Ballistics Advantage 4150 Chrome Molly Vanadium Steel with a 1 in 10 twist. It's 18 inches and it's a very heavy barrel. It's got the button rifling, a full length rifle gas system with a .089 inch gas port size. And for those of you who are planning on running it suppressed or changing out the muzzle device, it does have a 5 8 by 24 thread. The gas system is an Odin low pro profile adjustable gas block. It's carbon steel and it's black nitrided. It has an included uh, adjustment screw and spring and it's basically a direct impingement uh, system. The muzzle device that's on the end of it out of the box is a Precision Armament M41. So stay tuned on that. We're gonna talk a little bit about that muzzle device for sure. Uh, the bolt carrier group is a DPMS uh, in this case, 3, 308 compatible. Uh, they do make the rifle in other, other uh, calibers like 338, uh, and you can contact them, is my understanding, to get uh, a more custom barrel for whatever round you're, you're planning on getting within the, the limits of what they can do. But this particular one has a DPMS 308 compatible bolt carrier group. It's obviously nitrided, um, it's, it's properly staked, it's, and it's coated with a proprietary, or not proprietary, but it's coated with the Birdsong Black T safety coating on the outside of all of that to give it a, a, really, good, a really good coating and really long life. The, the safety is a, a, an ambidextrous short throw 45 degree safety, and believe it or not, that actually came into play quite a bit. Out of the box, it comes with a Radian Raptor ambidextrous charging handle, an Elfman SE trigger with a 3.5 pull. The handguard is a 15 inch CNC handguard or CNC machined handguard made of 6061 T6 aluminum and it's M lock based. The receiver extension is a six standard six position mil spec 7070, 7075 T6 aluminum extension. The buttstock that comes on it is your stand is the Luth AR MBA1. And that actually, again, put a pin in that. We're going to talk a little bit about that one too. The pistol grip that comes right out of the box is a really nice ergo rubber, rubberized with a soft touch over molding. The again, we talked about the finish overall is a birdsong coating. It weighs in at 7.8 pounds undressed with no, no optics, no glass, no extra stuff, no, no bipods, nothing like that. It does include in the case. Uh, a Pelican style case for the money that you're paying for it. And it does come out of the box with one 20 round Lancer magazine. Again, put a little pin in that one.
So let's talk about some of the pros and cons for the DSP Armory AR-10 Titan. Um, for starters, working from the back to the forwards now, or back to the front, this included Luth AR stock is an amazing option. Put a pin in that for, for one of the, the cons as well with regards to the QD attachment that we've got going on here. Put a pin in that. Another pro is the fact that it comes right out of the box for me with an overchar oversized charging handle. That, that's critical for me because since you've got this, this optic, you know, larger optic that's going to be in your way, that's just a nice touch and it just saved me some money of having to get, to get that as an aftermarket product. Um, speaking of the price point, for the price point that you're getting this rifle at, um, to be perfectly honest with you, you know, a pro is that it does come with everything you need right out of the box to get up and run it. There's not anything you have to buy other than a piece of glass to go on top of this and a bipod for the front and a monopod for the back if you're intending to shoot that style. But that's literally all you have to buy right straight out of the box from a pros and a cons perspective for this rifle. Another couple pros is obviously I mentioned the overmolded rubbery grip. It gives you a lot of great options to be able to, to hold on to and grip and, and shoot the rifle, as well as the ability for soft touch when you're doing more precision shooting. They've even paid attention to the tiny details. The safety they've got on this thing is ambidextrous for starters, and it's quarter throw, not full 90 throw. So um, it's a just an ambidextrous short throw 45 degree, and it can be set to 90 degrees if you choose to do so. Obviously, I'm not gonna do that. They don't mention the name brand or anything like that uh, in, the, in the documentation, but I can tell you that, you know, I love the 45 short throw. It won't be going to 90. The trigger, with that Elfman trigger, oh my God. Oh my God. Seriously, that is butter. I mean, I hate to say, hate to say it, and I don't know if there's any other way to put it, but that thing is just absolutely butter. Um, that's definitely a pro for this bad boy. It's covered with a forend that's actually um, handguards a 15 inch CNC milled 6061 T6 aluminum, uh, M-lock based with a QD attachment here, natively built in, as well as obviously the M-lock attachments. Uh, it has nothing, it's just naked on the bottom with M-lock and on the top it has a full length Picatinny rail to add attachments or lights or whatever. Obviously you don't wanna to add too much cause it's gonna impede your optic up there. Working back even further, they've included a Luth AR style, uh, uh, eminently adjustable uh, uh, butt stock, adjustable collapsible stock for those of you who want to get more of a precision, precision cheek weld and a precision setting for your body and your style of shooting. All right, so let's talk about this muzzle comp real quick. That muzzle comp that comes on the end of the, the, the Titan, the DSP Armory Titan, is both a positive and it's gonna lead us into a con at the exact same time. So from a positive perspective and a pro perspective for that comp that comes on this thing out of the box, and to be clear, you can change it out. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's whatever your preference is and what your use case is gonna be for it. That comp in tandem with the Crimson Trace CTL 5324 that I had on top of it with the Christmas tree mill radian um, reticle gave me the ability so long as I kept the the magnification at a reasonable level for the distances I were shooting. So in other words, when I was shooting out to 500 yards, keeping the magnification around eight, you know, six, between six and 10, and not getting above 10, it gave me the ability uh, to stabilize this rifle every single shot, every single time. This, th this little beauty didn't move hardly at all. And so I was able to pick up where my point of impact was from in relation to my point of aim, make that, that real-time adjustment, and then you know, break the next shot. 
very, very quickly. So this comp that comes on out of the box does an amazing job of stabilizing the rifle and keep it making for a reduced recoil as well as quick, quick follow-up shots. But it does lead to a con, okay? So that's going to dial us into some of our cons. The con on this thing is, as you can imagine just by looking at it, it will flat out dig a trench right in front of you. So if you're, you're sitting up camp and looking to dig a latrine, you might want to start by you know, breaking off a few shots and seeing how deep you can get with that thing. Seriously, it literally will dig a trench right out in front of you. Um, uh, in addition, it, it also obviously produces quite a bit of heat. So there were some situations where I was uh, on the ground, at ground level, in drier environments, and it was actually, you know, they started putting out some smoke and putting out some fire right at the barrel. Bright side, it was right there at the barrel, and I was able to get up and stomp the fire out before it could get out of hand or do anything crazy or start a wildfire. But, you know, it's just something to be aware of. The, my spotter beside me, every time he was saying, you know, letting me know ranging and, you know, saying send it and giving me the signal to send the, send the shot or break the shot, he, he would close his eyes. He would have to shield his eyes like this, you know, so they it close the one eye that was closest to where he was at because he was on my right. Um, he would have to close that eye and still keep his spotting scope on, you know, on target, uh, keeping the, the blast getting in his face. Um, so it, it's just something to be aware of. I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it a, a, a pro and a con both. Uh, the reality of it is though, that's not a dig on DSP Armory by any stretch of the imagination. They have done the right thing in doing this, this particular comp on the rifle because it does do an amazing job, like I said, of recoil management uh, and follow-up shots. So kudos to them, but we're still going to call that a con as well. Another con I want to talk about is that oversized charging handle in combination with the Luth AR stock. So again, not a dig on DSP Armory. I mean, that, that this is not a product that they necessarily designed. Um, but because of the nature of a, a 308 or, AO10, or AR-10 style upper, there's a much, much longer travel for the bolt carrier group and a much larger bolt carrier group, as well as a much longer charging handle to be able to facilitate that enhanced and, and beefier uh, upper receiver. So that, once you have the comb adjusted on your Luth AR stock up to, to a level to be able to accommodate your natural point of aim, gives it just it, it, it you know it gives a problem uh when i would charge use the charging handle sometimes i would hit the comb and bottom out ultimately though i was i have mine set just enough to where i could actually stop just shy of the comb and let go that wasn't a full charge to the rear that was a, you know maybe a, a eight tenths charge and then could let go and it would it would successfully put the rifle into battery but it's just something to be aware of for those of you out there who are watching this review that you may end up actually having an issue between the comb and the, the raised platform on the Luth AR in relation to your charging handle. Uh, again, not at all a dig on DSP Armory, but it is something to be aware of and a potential con that could impact you when you've got your rifle in your now, hands. Now, the final con I want to talk about is, again, not a dig on DSP Armory at all. Not even a little bit. This is yet another thing that DSP Armory can't be faulted for but it's something that you, the consumer, need to be aware of. Uh, and you may consider this a con, you may not. You know, your mileage is going to vary on this one. On their website, as I mentioned at, at the onset of this video, they, they state that it comes with a Lancer magazine right out of the box. Uh, those of you who know Lancer magazines, you know they've got the steel feed ramps, steel lip feed ramps. They're a super high quality magazine. They work really well. Now, that said, I can't testify to whether the Lancer magazines work in my rifle or not, because when DSP Armory sent me one of their prototypes, uh, unfortunately, they sent me an ASC Black magazine. And again, please, no dig on DSP Armory to this. They were, you know, we were trying to get everything coordinated. They were sending me the materials out for me to review, and this, they just chunked this in the box with it to, so that we could get everything up and going. This, though, ASC, I will dig them a trench a mile long and throw this crap in there. This is a piece of fecal matter. This is a piece of crap. It would not feed successfully. I would literally have to hold the magazine up inside the receiver to even get it to fire one shot at a time. Every time it would fire on the times it did feed and did fire, the magazine would drop free and it would, it would 
I would lose the magazine, have to start from scratch. So I tried, I was like, okay, well, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's just say maybe I got a bad ASC magazine. So I, out of my own pocket, ordered another ASC magazine in flat dark earth. Again, fecal matter. Those are going in the trash. I wouldn't own them. Now, next thing is I went ahead while I was at it, I ordered a, a hex mag, SR25 style X hex mag and an SR25 style Magpul mag to see you know how those would perform in the rifle as well. As well, again, I didn't have a Lancer magazine available to me, you know, that they come with out of the box, so I had to test what I had to test. So, from a pro perspective, they do take standard SR25. The rifle takes standard SR25 style magazines, and those are readily available. Um, the negative side, though, is again this Magpul magazine, Magpul. SR25 magazine on the initial feed when I was using the charging handle would not always successfully go into battery. A lot of times it would have a diagonal feed and it would get caught up on the feed ramp. It wouldn't go fully up into the chamber and go fully up into battery. After that, for the most part, most times the Magpul magazine would feed most of the time. It would feed correctly and accurately, but that's not what I'm going to count my life on. I want it to feed every time reliably and religiously. So Magpul magazine is a no-go in my mind. Now again, your mileage may vary. The hex mags, these performed, you know, and this is the only one I've got uh, because again, I bought a bunch of mags. I wanted to try this thing out. This one performed like a champ, uh, literally perfection. I had no problems out of it whatsoever that were related to the magazine itself. Now I did have some ammunition problems and we're going to talk about that as a con here in just a, in just a second. I did have some, some ammunition problems, but they were not related to the magazine or the feeding of the ammunition. It was the ammunition itself that I had the problems with. Now, to be clear though, the downside to a hex mag is that it does, it's, I mean, you can see, or maybe you can see on camera and here, I mean, it's kind of on the, in the 308 styles, kind of on the janky plasticky side up at the top for the feed lips. And I did note that when I would get it, you know, fully, fully loaded, uh, I was having some stretch and some, some bow up at the top a lot of times with the 308 rounds. That concerns me from the long haul in the long term, but it doesn't concern me in the immediate, you know, right now kind of, kind of status. So point of all this is, is uh, from, a, from a pro and a con perspective, pro is for the rifle that it takes the SR25 style magazines. As they stated on the website, my assumption is they send a Lancer magazine out to those of you out there who are going to be purchasing the rifle. Um, the downside is uh, the downside is is that you do have to be cautious what magazines. It is a little picky on magazines. No shock on a 308 platform or AR10 platform, but still just something for you to, to, to note. So my final con on the, the the DSP Armory Titan AR10 in 308 is is going to be the ammunition. Now again, just like with my other cons, none of these cons are a dig on the rifle itself. None of these cons should change your, your perception of whether or not to buy the rifle or whether or not it's, it's right for you. This con is synonymous with any number of rifles, in particular the AR-10 platforms in 308. But it was a tiny bit picky with ammunition. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you the caveat of the ammunition that I had the most problems with was steel ammo. Shockingly enough, it would have a full primer strike on steel ammunition, steel cased ammunition, and it, but it would fail to fire. It would have a, uh, a, a failure to fire, a failure to ignite, even with a full primer strike uh, on the steel ammo. Uh, obviously, it also had a little more challenges in loading the steel cased ammunition from, you know, uh, from the magazines up into the chamber. Uh, so steel cased ammunition, it wasn't exactly a fan of. What is that stuff? Yep, it's getting dirty. All right, I'm done. Done. Am I getting any primer strike stuff? on them at all? Barely. I mean, it doesn't even look like it touched it. This one did. That one did. Well, I mean, Maybe it's your mag. Now, again, can I really call that a con to DSP Armory and the Titan? Not really. I mean, let's be honest, it's steel cased ammunition. This is more of a precision rifle that's designed for precision shooting uh, and... <laughs> I mean, come on, I shouldn't even have been throwing steel case ammo through it, but for those of you consumers out there who I'm doing this review for, for as much as you're having to spend on this rifle, I wanted to make sure to give it as much of a run as possible as I could, and I just had to try to throw some steel through it. So, 
bottom line, as always, would I spend my money on this rifle? Would I trust my life to it? Would I spend my money on this rifle? Yes, if. Yes, if. If I were looking to get a fully out of the box ready, completely comprehensive, all inclusive, ready made, just throw an optic on it and go, precision AR-10 rifle in 338, 308, or we're contacting for a specific barrel design or specific design, we're contacting DSP Armory directly, then yes, absolutely, I would spend my money on it. Because what you're getting with this package is the ability to do exactly that. You can just throw an optic on it and go. There's literally nothing else you have to buy. You don't have to be concerned with your competition triggers. You don't have to be concerned with, do I have the right ambidextrous, you know, right or oversized charging handle? Do I have the right stock on this thing? Is the stock gonna be too heavy or too light? Uh, you, you don't have to worry about the, the weight of the rifle, the comp on the rifle, the, the precision of it, the ability to adjust the gas block to be able to, you know, for suppressors or non-suppressed or specifically designed for competition to be able to adjust the gas for exactly the ammunition and load that you're using and so on and so on and so on. The rubberized grip, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You literally can just break the box open or break the Pelican case open that they send with this thing throw an optic on it and go. I don't think that I would change anything on it at all. I don't think, you know, unless you wanted to maybe go with a, a, an oversized magazine release just because for quicker uh, acquisition for competition and maybe, maybe, you know, a larger, more oversized bolt release, bolt carrier group release, again, for competition purposes. For your average Joe use for hunting and for just regular competition, I don't know that I would even do any of that. So. Bottom line is, would I spend my money on it? Absolutely. Would I trust my life to it? Well, if you watch my CTL 5324 video on the, where I reviewed this particular optic and this particular piece of glass, you'll note that I said that, that I'm almost to the point where I would trust my life with the CTL 5324, but there's a couple little small caveats. Well, I've got the same thing with regards to DSP Armory Titan. I personally would definitely trust my life to this 308 rifle because I don't use it in a military law enforcement or hostile environment or non-permissive environment type use. I'm just gonna be using it for competition, hunting, uh, those types of application. God forbid if there was ever a zombie apocalypse or some horse crap like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would trust my life for it in those applications. Now, have I run it through enough rounds and enough scenarios, you know, in dirt and in cold environments and so on and so forth to truly say that this is a, you know, is, is, a, is the next great, great military rifle? No, obviously not. Um, I would love that opportunity. And for any of you out there who would love to fund me taking a trip to Alaska to shoot it and give me a bunch of ammo, I, I'm game. Let's go. We'll jump on a boat tomorrow. Uh, but for me, Yes, I would definitely spend my money on it. And yes, I would definitely trust my life to it. So hopefully this review has had some useful information for you out there who are contemplating purchasing the DSP Armory Titan in whatever caliber you're choosing to do so. Until we see you out on the range, you keep living your dream.